So this is an introductory lecture on the Unix shell, the Bash shell, uh, and there are a variety of learning outcomes that we're going to try to hit as we move through um, these first few lessons. Um, but today we're mostly going to be talking about the first two learning outcomes identified here. Um, how, you know, what, how, knowing what a shell is and how to access it, as well as um, some of the basic understandings of how a shell is structured and how we can use it to navigate and uh, accomplish specific tasks. So just as a disclaimer, a lot of the examples and things that I talk about today were um, pulled directly from the Data Carpentry workshops. Uh, it's an excellent resource. I suggest that you all go there to look for information. Um, they have some really excellent examples and exercises to help you become familiarized with the shell and how it works. So just a little background on the Unix shell. Um, Unix is a powerful operating system that is commonly employed in uh, command line environments. Uh, it means that we're only going to be using a keyboard. We're not going to be using a mouse and a keyboard. Um, the big thing about the Unix bash shell environment is that uh, you know, most clusters, supercomputers, other large computational resources are running on this kind of system and therefore are, uh, it's very important for us to know how to utilize these resources for scientific computing and knowing how to use command line bash, command line Unix uh, is going to be really powerful and transform transformative in our ability to, to, to execute some uh, uh, commands on these systems and use them to their fullest capacity. Um, but it can be a little bit confusing um, because most of us aren't used to using these types of command line interfaces. Um, but uh, once you learn it, I think you'll find that scripting and programming in this uh, shell environment is a great tool for empirical uh, biologists um, it helps us deal with large amounts of text in very simple ways and can be really powerful if, if you know how to use it well. So uh, basically what is Unix is an operating system. Uh, and what is an operating system? It's a resource manager that is a set of software routines um, that allows a user and applications to access some sort of system resource. And um, basically uh, Unix is a very simple operating system that consists of three components, a kernel, which is going to tell you how it's going to dole out memory and how the computer does its calculations. A shell, which is the textual command line interface that allows the user to actually interact with the kernel. And then there are programs that uh, basically we use the shell to activate programs that tells the kernel what to do. So it tells the memory and the um, resources how to work. Uh, there are other types of operating systems that use graphic user interfaces or GUIs. Um, and uh, that's how we typically think about implementing programs in either a Windows environment or an OS environment. Um, for this class, we'll actually be using an Ubuntu environment, but that's also, it's just a graphic user interface of a Linux, interface, of a Linux operating system, which is uh, basically what Unix is. So, why do we want to do all this stuff? Well, uh, one of the things that uh, you'll find is that once you get good at doing Unix specifically doing things like being able to write scripts to do tasks that are repetitive, um, you can find that you can save a lot of time. So here's a little, fun little uh, graphic showing, you know, you've got these tasks and that are repetitive and it takes a certain amount of time to do them. And for the non-geek, you know, you're just going to do it manually and it'll just keep on doing it manually. And, and the time it takes to do it is always going to be just increasing linear, where the, the geek is going to sort of do something manually, get annoyed, write a script or program to automate that, then just hits the button and automates it, and then they won't waste any more time doing it, and eventually the geek wins. So um, if it was all only this easy, uh, but you get the general principle, when we're doing things repetitively, programming makes a lot of sense. Um, the thing about um, Unix is, that I like this little quote that I found online, Unix is user-friendly, it's just very selective about who its friends are. Um, it's not, it'll take some time and effort to get used to it. That's for certain. <clears throat> Here are a few resources that you can check out that have some uh, cheat sheets and some other standard commands that, and, and an explanation for how to use them. Um, 
as well as a website where you can go and sort of check out the different parts of how the shell commands work. Uh, I'm going to, uh, a lot of what we're going to be doing at the beginning of the class, we're going to use um, a specific data set. You can find it on the iLearn website for this week. Uh, it's called Data for Class Shell Examples. Um, and in that database, uh, we're basically going to be dealing with that, and then there's also an examples database we're going to be using. We're going to be um, looking at two different types of files, and it's important that you understand how fi the files are constructed um, to really be able to understand how we're going to be manipulating them. So there are two sequencing files. Uh, one is called a FASTA sequencing file. The other one's called the FASTQ sequencing file. FASTA sequencing file is just... Uh, a file where every sequence has two lines associated with it. The first line starts with a little um, carrot there, um, that little um, <coughs> um, less than sign and um, followed by an identifier for the sequence. And then the next line is actually the raw letters of the DNA sequence. Whereas the FASTQ has four lines, um, its identifiers on the first line, it's preceded by an at sign, um, then the letters of the sequence, then a plus sign, and then a bunch of symbols that represent how good the data was to call each of those letters. So it's a measure of the quality of the data um, associated with each of those base calls. And um, this data actually comes from uh, a 16S sequencing um, experiment where they were looking at the, the bacterial microbiomes of mice. Um, so here they're looking at the 16S sequencing is basically a way to figure out which species of bacteria were in these different mice. And they have had two different um, sets, uh, 10 mice in one treatment, nine in another. Um, they also had a mock community where they run a standard of uh, uh, where they know what the, the makeup is of the bacterial communities, so what 16S sequences to expect. And they did something called paired end sequencing where they ended up with FASTQ files um, from a MySeq sequencing run. And uh, this is um, data that was generated by Pat Schloss. Uh, it's part of a well known set of tutorials called the Mother Tutorials. In the bash Unix command line interface, uh, there are um, commands and arguments. So an example of a command is ls, which uh, stands for list. This is a command that we use to list the contents of a directory. Um, and there are some other uh, key components that we'll need to know how to use the uh, Linux command line. And probably the most challenging one to get used to for Windows-oriented, uh, graphic user, user interface-oriented people is how to navigate to the file structure. Um, so just so we understand, this is how the file structure is set up on your computer, uh, your Windows machine, on my computer, which is a Mac, and on any Linux computer as well. Uh, and basically, it has this tree-like system. Um, what we call top level is actually also referred to as the root is just a slash. And so you can think of it like an upside down tree. So this is the base of the tree if it's upside down. Uh, that slash is the root, right? And in the root, we'll find other directories. So there'll be slash user, slash var, slash home. These are all locations in your, in your directory system, in your file system. And then within each of those directories, we might find other directories like lib in user or june 993 to or another username in home. And, and this is how these sort of things are structured. And what we end up having is each of these um, examples of um, this slash home slash June 9932, etc. These are examples of what we refer to as the path, right? And so there are two different ways that path is actually defined. One path is defined as an environmental variable 
that's it's going to specify a list of one or more directories uh, directory names that are separated by semicolon um, and that means that when we say something is in your path or it's in this environmental variable then this is a directory where we can put programs and basically you can see it at any time but in this case when I say path what I'm really referring to is another definition of path I know it's complicated there too but this is the main one that I'm referring to is and path in this case is a unique location um, for a file or folder in a file system uh, of an operating system. And so basically a path is a combination of slash and alphanumeric characters. And there are two types of paths when we refer to this case. So this is the location. There's the absolute path, which specifies the location of a file or directory from all the way from the root directory. And there's a relative path. And this is the path that relates to, to wherever you want to look at relative to where you are at that moment. So whatever working directory you are in at the moment you are looking at that path. So another way of thinking about this is the absolute path is like the GPS coordinates, the latitude and longitude of where a location is. Whereas the location of a relative path is like giving somebody directions. So if I was going to say, hey, uh, you know, how do I get to Chapman Science Building from my house? So you go out the driveway, take a left, take another left, take a right when you get to the T, you know, go down until you go through um, the traffic circle after you go through the roundabout, go down the hill, go two stop signs, take a left, and then uh, it's the first building on your right. So I'm giving you a location relative to where I am at at this moment. Right, so that's the difference between an absolute path or relative path. So if we think about what this means, say I am, um, you know, in a lib directory here, right? So I'm in this user lib directory. If I want to move to the home directory over here, the phone of this data directory from the home directory, um, I can give it the absolute path. So I can say, hey, change directory space slash home slash g932 slash data and it'll move me from this directory all the way to this directory um, in addition to so it'll 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 I'll go backwards and i'll move and i'll go into here um, alternatively if i wanted to give it the relative path and and uh, it's important to notice that what this basically says is hey i'm going to start from the root and go all the way forward okay if I'm going to give it the relative path, I'm actually going to, and I'm in this directory, this is my present working directory, this is where I'm located on my file system. Um, if I use the relative path, I actually have to move through all these files to get over here, right? And so in this case, I give it cd dot dot slash, which moves me back to uh, this directory, cd dot dot slash, which moves me back to the root, then slash home, slash uh, JUE9932 slash data. So what we see here is that I'm taking a stepwise approach moving in this pro in this pathway. So this is one of the hardest things to get used to is relative paths and absolute paths. Um, you know, you kind of have to count your way through this, but it helps initially if you can visualize this tree-like structure. And thus it is by using either the absolute or the relative path, we can understand how we are to navigate and locate things within the file structure of uh, command line Unix. So that's a brief introduction to sort of just generally how Unix is set up and how it's structured, uh, specifically this idea and concept of path. Uh, the next video we'll talk more specifically about some of the commands that you can use to uh, basically uh, get the kernel to do things.